Hello everyone. In this video, I wanted to showcase more of that local CTF or capture the flag competition that I kind of put together myself for my local school. And um, the challenge that I want to look at was called UPX. And the uh, challenge prompt is I checked the mailbox and found this. And the hint is actually truncated here, but the tr hint should have been this isn't UPS, it's UPX. So this delivery was something you'd, you as the user would go ahead and download and you would want to show it in the folder that you uh, and, and, and moved into and navigated into so you could actually interact with the file. So I'll demonstrate this for you. It's under my UPS folder. And delivery is the file right here. Um, this may or may not already be solved, admittedly. But once you run delivery, which would be... Uh, uh, you'd note that it is a executable. You would know that, oh, this package must have been shipped to the wrong address. So I'm actually just going to copy the a local one to make sure it's the right thing. Because you'll see very, very soon that it overwrites. Okay. So the ploy is that you will do a little bit more reconnaissance on this file, and you'll notice that it has some interesting things in that there's, like, nothing really in the file that you can see. Like, you can't find that string that says, oh, no, this package has been delivered to something else. But hopefully, if you were to keep looking and looking and looking, you'd see a little bit more strings pointing you towards UPX, which is the uh, universal packer for executables. I'm trying to find it. Now I want to look. UPX, there's some note at the top, and then so there's more info. This file is packed with the UPX executable packer, and it gives you a link to their web page. So that's kind of convenient for the for the individual trying to solve this challenge. So I, I don't know if they store that in the metadata or not. No, okay, I don't know. But that's how you, as the user, hopefully, would figure out that, oh, this is UPX, and... Hopefully they had not seen that before, so we'd be able to go to that website that they kind of gave us, the Ultimate Packer for Executables. And I think in my case, a lot of the guys needed to download the 64-bit, just Linux version, and then they were able to just run it straight from the command line. So, UPX, Ultimate Packer for Executables. If you go through and read the man page or look at the hint, you can decompress these files. So, UPX dash D on that delivery, that executable, what it does is it will go ahead and, okay, decompress it or unpack it, and it tells us it unpacked one file. So there were no problems, no issues, and it doesn't actually create a new file, it just goes ahead and, I think, overwrites the current one. So you would probably, at least very likely, you would still run the file itself, but it gives you that same, oh, this package must be shipped to the wrong address. You, as an individual, would have to run delivery uh, with strings. So now you can be able to look at all the strings inside the file, and I will pipe this through less so we can keep hunting. And of course, at this point, you would know, hopefully, the, okay, let's try and grep for the flag itself. Let's see if we can find USCGA. So I'll look for that, and I say, yep, there it is. USCGA packing an executable can hide some data. It's just like that string. So I will go ahead and copy that. I should have just done it straight up in the strings output. But now we can go ahead and submit that and get our flag. So the way that I built that was super easy. Um, the create script would actually compile a source code of C with a 32-bit and make sure it's static. So, because typically UPX has to have a like large enough file that it can pack it, and actually because the program does pretty much nothing, it actually wasn't large enough um, by default. So you have to say static in uh, GCC when you compile it to note, okay, I want to include like pretty much everything and make this make this program large, um, and then it. Uh, packs it with the UPX, and that dash dash exact, I think, retains all the information. Dash dash exact. Yep. When compressing, required to be able to get a byte identical file after decompression with option D. Uh, it looks like it's not entirely in progress, or whatever the case may be. But I ended up using it to see 
because I wanted that byte identical file. So the source code is actually just a simple C program that literally just says, hey, um, this package must have been shipped with to the wrong address. So earlier when I was creating this, I actually couldn't store these strings as strings because the compiler, like GCC, would notice, oh, the program actually isn't any isn't doing anything with these strings. It's not printing them out on the screen. So I don't think it just even it, it like it wouldn't even keep track of the strings in the executable itself. I would compile, run strings on it, and I wouldn't be able to find these things. So I had to create kind of like a fake case where like, hey, I still want to execute statements with this with the, with this data. Like, I want to be able to work with it so it's included inside of the the binary and inside the executable. So what I actually did is I just tested, <laughs> like, a completely unnatural case, a completely like implausible thing. If the home environment variable is equal to something unnecessary, again, that just plain wouldn't happen. But that way, it would keep these strings and that in that data with the file because it, it knows okay there's a possibility obviously not realistic but there's a possibility that these commands and these statements could be executed so we have to keep the strings in the binary and inside the executable and then i would just go ahead and pack it with upx and then we'd have the challenge and we could decompress it just like we did to get the flag so yep we got our points and that's pretty much it that's how I finished and wrote the UPX challenge. So, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you in the next video.